Hey there, there are two main ways that you can log your offline bookings within Bokin, and they can both be found under the bookings tab, book experiences and the booking desk. I'll show you how each of these work shortly, but first I want to mention the difference between the two and when you might use each of them. Book Experiences is a full and detailed checkout experience, and if you've set up a payment provider like Stripe, PayPal, or Trust My Travel in your Bokin account, you can actually process payments right from here. The Booking Desk is a simplified version of the checkout process, so it allows you to log bookings a little quicker. Although you cannot process payments in the booking desk like you can with book experiences, one of the main features is that you can overbook your availability as well as book in the past and add customized reservations. So let's take a look at book experiences. If you already use our booking engine on your website, you'll notice that it's almost exactly the same process, but you would be the one filling it out for the customer. So I'll go ahead and walk you through a test booking here. As I'm doing this in the background, I want to talk to you about when you might use book experiences. As I mentioned, one of its big features is that if you do not currently have a way to process credit card payments, you can set up a payment provider who will process it right here. Let's say that you have a couple that walks in looking to take a tour and they are hoping to pay by credit card. You can open up your computer and log all of their booking information, as well as take the credit card info to pay for the tour right there. As you can see here, this is the product that I am booking. And over here, I have the option to pay online, enter payment manually, and pay later. Pay online now is what you would select if you have set up a payment provider and you would like to type in the credit card information to process it right here. Enter payment manually could be either if you are accepting cash right now or if you have another way to process credit cards and you want to do that on your own. This will just be entering in how the customer paid so that you can keep track of it for your records. If you select pay later, this would mean that you as the supplier would need to accept payment upon arrival from this particular customer. The booking desk is very, very similar. It is set up a little bit differently, but the idea is the same. Here, you would just choose the date and time that the customer wants to book for. One thing that I do want to point out here, as I mentioned earlier, the booking desk allows you to overbook your availability, book in the past, and add customized tours. This is why you will see that each day on the calendar is in green, showing that you can add a booking in on any day. Let's say that you normally don't offer tours on Mondays, but you receive a call from a customer wondering if you could accommodate a private group for that day. You can add this right into Bokin using the booking desk. Once you choose your date and time, you can go ahead and continue, and it will take you to a page where it will ask you to enter in all of the necessary customer information. This is where you can select how many people. Let's look at another example. You receive an email from a customer asking if you can accommodate a group of 15 participants when your max capacity is typically only 10. In a case like this, if you are willing to take a larger group, you can use the booking desk to quickly override your availability and make the booking right here. Under this payment section, you'll see that this is where you can mark how the customer will be paying, but you cannot process the credit card the way that you could in book experiences. If you already use some sort of POS system on site, I would recommend using the booking desk to track your bookings because it is a quicker way to add it right into Bokin. Once you finish creating your offline booking in either book experiences or in the booking desk, it will automatically show up in your sales feed, which can be found under the bookings tab. Here, you'll be able to see a detailed overview of all your bookings, regardless of the sales channel, with the most recent at the top. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to offline bookings is that tracking these in Bokin will also help you keep your availability up to date. Let's say you take a booking over the phone for five participants in a couple of weeks, but you can only have a total of 10 participants that day, which leaves you with five remaining spots. Let's also say that you are connected to a number of sales channels like Viator, Expedia, and your website.
When you add this booking into Boken, it will automatically update your availability on those other sales channels so that you will only have those five remaining spots for that day. This will ensure that you do not overbook yourself for a particular day. Now that you know how to make an offline booking in Boken, I encourage you to try it out the next time you get a phone call, email, or a walk-in. Thanks for watching.